Uh, so grateful to be talking on the theme of creative appreciation this morning and the topic of expanding awareness. Aldous Huxley, uh, the great author and explorer of consciousness, uh, he once said, we human beings have an almost infinite capacity for taking things for granted. I can sure resonate with that taking for granted part when I think about times that I've taken my uh, wife or family for granted, when I've taken for granted the, the wonder of the job that I get to do here and of my ministry, all the incredible people and connections I've made along the way. I think of taking for granted when I think of the um, incredible prayer of our country of experiencing equality and liberty and justice for all. And yet that infinite capacity part, uh, it stings a little bit for me too. Uh, when I think about times that I've chosen standoffishness instead of uh, love with my partner. When I think of the times that I chose getting that busy work done that I thought was oh so important at the time instead of spending a precious moment with one of my children. When I think about times that I may have been uh, short instead of compassionate with a coworker or God forbid a, a congregant, it, it can sting. And at the heart of my message of creative appreciation, you know, not only do we sometimes fail to fully appreciate what matters most to us, but when we do take things for granted, we minimize the momentum of a creative power in our life that is fueled by appreciation. Because an active appreciation, an active appreciation of all the wonderful aspects of our lives doesn't just help us be grateful, but it is a, a wave of momentum for our lives that doesn't just magnify our blessings, but that can multiply them. That's how powerful a creative appreciation is. As cynical as this idea that we have an infinite capacity for taking things for granted is, I also believe that the opposite is true that each of us has an infinite capacity for appreciation. I may never be able to appreciate my wife and family fully, but I vow to try. I may never be able to fully appreciate uh, the wonder of getting to be in community with so many incredible people here at Mile High Church and the communities that I've been a part of in the past, but I vow to try. I may never fully be able to appreciate the miracle of life, giving of itself in so many different creative ways, but I vow to try. And that's a creative appreciation. And for each of us, and what I want to talk about today, is that when we can cultivate an expanding awareness, we can bring and demonstrate a consciousness of wholeness in our lives that can demonstrate greater healing, greater depth of understanding, and a new level of livingness in your life. Probably the most famous of all Zen stories is called A Cup of Tea. It was really popularized in the 1950s uh, in a book called Zen Flesh, Zen Bones by a poet named Paul Reps, and he brought together all of these incredible teaching stories from Buddhism. And the story goes like this. Nan In, a Japanese master during the Meiji era, received a university professor who came to inquire about Zen. Nan In served tea. He poured his visitor's cup full and then kept on pouring. The professor watched the overflow until he no longer could restrain himself. It is over full. No more will go in. Like this cup. Nanin said, you are full of your own opinions and speculations. How can I teach you Zen unless you first empty your cup? And it's a profound and yet simple message. The teacup represents our consciousness, our ability to receive, and the tea itself represents spiritual understanding, spiritual wisdom. And I found in my life that there's two ways to practice spirituality. The first way is 
thinking that you know stuff, which results often in a kind of smugness and self-righteousness. The other way is to live in the glory of the mystery of life, knowing that wisdom comes and knowing that you don't know. And as Christopher Hitchens once alluded to, knowledge only precludes the understanding that you know less and less about more and more and more and more about less and less. And yet, in this willingness not to know and to glean whatever understandings we can, for me comes the richness of spiritual living. And so each of us is called in our own way to create space to bring this wisdom into our life. Ernest Holmes expressed this idea when he talked about the importance of being open at the top. When he says, be open at the top, he he means just what the Zen master meant. Empty your cup and have a beginner's mind when it comes to receiving spiritual understanding. When Holmes says, open at the top, he means, don't just listen to the wisdom from thousands of years ago, but listen to what science and philosophy is telling us today about our life. He means, be willing to change your mind. He means, always look at life honoring your understanding, but always know there is more. There is more. And the first step to really expanding awareness in our lives is the willingness to empty our cup to have the courage enough to put our understanding aside, or for me, that greatest illusion that I allow myself to live under, that I'm right. Put that aside and open up to get that new information. It's so important to creating and expressing life in new and dynamic ways. Holmes, he tells us, how much can we see? How much can we accept? How much can we find in our own consciousness that is no longer repudiated by our own denials? Whatever that is, that much we can have. And all we're asked to do at times is to release the old understandings that are keeping us from being present. Like the teacup story, I think we can approach challenges or new desires for understanding the same way. Sometimes the question is, isn't, what do I need to learn in this experience to get through it, but what do I need to unlearn? Not what do I need to know, but what do I need to unknow? What do I need to deprogram to step into my life in a new way? So many of us are familiar with that expression. Is the glass half full or half empty? The idea being that if you see the glass is half full, you're optimistic. But if you see it as empty, or half empty, then you're pessimistic. But for me, taking this story of a cup of tea, that half empty, half full, is actually the perfect way to approach our lives. It's good to have some understanding. It's good to have some wisdom. And yet it's oh so important to always leave room open for more. I've learned this in my working life or even working in this church. If we don't leave space, if we don't make room in our lives, how is what is being called to emerge going to emerge if we don't create space for the new? And so the perfect way to live for me is with a half full, half empty container of consciousness. And yet we may ask ourselves, how how do I expand my understanding of the richness of life? How do I receive even more information if my glass is only half full? Well, the answer is, you get a bigger glass. You widen your container. And this is the second step to expanding awareness. Empty yourself of outdated understandings and work diligently to expand your container of consciousness so you can receive even more. So that the next time you go to see the Zen teacher about uh, learning spiritual information and he asks you if you want a cup of tea, um, you say, yes, but I brought my own cup. You know, and you pull out a super big gulp and you say, only half full, please. How do we expand our container? Quite simply, we develop inner life. Develop inner life. We can do this through traditional models of meditation and prayer, but really, It's about doing things that widen your perspective, doing things that help connect you with a presence and a perspective larger than your own. Sitting down with that good book, taking that walk in nature, being fully present 
to family and friends in a holiday celebration. All of these things develop and expand our inner life. All those things that you have on your list of wanting to do but haven't done them because you tell yourself there's no material good that they can create, all of those things. Those are what we must do to expand our container so that we can step into our life in every moment appreciating in grander and grander ways. I always remember being convinced, this was about 10 years ago, to um, do what was called the master cleanse. Anyone heard of this? Um, You're supposed to go for 10 days, if I remember right, and you take water and you squeeze lemon juice in it and you put in maple syrup and you put in cayenne pepper and you drink it for 10 days. And I'm quite sure there's just two girls in a garage somewhere that make these diets up for us and go, oh my God, look, they're actually doing it. And I don't know if it's still a thing today. If you were here, you could remind me. But I made it about four days uh, and uh, I was starving. And so I knew I was going to end this and I was going to eat something. And my first instinct was to go get a hamburger, but I wanted something lighter. And so I went into the kitchen and I dug through the cupboards for something light to eat. And I I found right in the back of the cupboard a can of pea soup. Now, I, I want to speak to the significance of that can of pea soup because I would argue that wherever you are, if you've lived there for more than two years, more than likely, you have something like this can of pea soup. It may be some creamed corn, some canned yams, some black beans, something that you bought from the supermarket at the time, but now you've glanced over for years and years, and it's collecting dust back there. And so I took this can of pea soup, and I prepared it, and I ate it, and it was the most delicious meal I've ever had. I appreciated every last bite. So the question becomes, how can I take that appreciation that I had for that pea soup and apply it to every person and every activity in my life? That is to live well. I don't want to say to people, you're like a can of pea soup in the back of the cupboard to me, but how can I apply a creative appreciation that allows me to fully take in the blessing that is before me? And this is the point of widening that container, of being more open to receive the good that's available to us in life. I love how Allen Ginsberg put it. He said, when you notice something clearly and see it vividly, it then becomes sacred. You know, see something or someone that matters to you right now. See it clearly. See them vividly and watch as they become sacred. Mary Oliver put it even more emphatically. She said, attention is the beginning of devotion. You see that that creative appreciation, it's like a sixth sense. It's like a muscle we have to continue to work out and build upon. Wherein that first step is emptying our container and the next is expanding it. The final step is to let that spiritual information in. Let the appreciation in so you can express it all around you. What else led to that full appreciation of the pea soup? Well, it was fasting. It was choosing not to eat and to do this weird diet for four days. And so I want to invite you today to fast as well, but not what you might be thinking of. I'm actually asking you to fast, not on anything that you like to do or anything that you love. I'm only asking you to fast on that which you don't like. In particular, your negative thinking. In particular, thoughts of lack. In particular, acts of self-beratement. In particular, judging other people. Why not fast and diet on these unconstructive methods And again, take all that energy that you might put into negativity or judgment, worry, regret, and put it into appreciating your life as it is. Being open to whatever spiritual information is prepared right here and right now to come to you in a dynamic and powerful way. Ernest Holmes um, didn't, didn't tell a whole lot of different stories. Uh, But one that he tells really briefly in The Science of Mind is about uh, a man who's incredibly thirsty. 
He's just parched. And someone gives him a glass of water, and he drinks it and continues to profess and talk about how thirsty he was. What's the missing part in that story? Having his thirst quenched, feeling whole, feeling full, feeling complete. For so many of us, that's the missing part of our lives. We know how to feel thirsty. We know how to want. We know how to feed ourselves. But sometimes we don't know how to fully receive the appreciation of the fullness in our lives. It sounds contrite when we talk about water or food, perhaps, but what about when we talk about real love? When we talk about really feeling the presence of the sacred in our lives? What about when we talk about really feeling whole and like our complete self in our lives right now? That's what we have to do is to learn to receive that gift so that we can practice it in our lives. Our our science of mind and spirit philosophy is, is a positive and powerful one. And one of the biggest difficulties that people run into when they enter into our philosophy is they think, oh, I'm just going to practice this stuff and everything's going to be honky-dory. Everything's going to be great. What we forget is for taking this positive and powerful philosophy and then applying it, in my case, to the mess that is myself. The years or sometimes decades of negative thinking, of self-righteousness, of telling myself uh, my life isn't enough. I now have to take this pure spiritual information and try and stuff it into the teacup of my consciousness, which is often filled with years or, again, decades of grime and muck. And it can be a painful process. Carl Jung said this once. He said, there's no coming to consciousness without pain. It's not meant to be this negative, pessimistic idea. It's just that when I'm willing to be conscious, when I'm willing to allow the love of spirit, a sense of the sacred, into my consciousness and into my life. That muck that has been hiding at the bottom, it's got to come up. It's got to come out. This analogy is one of Ernest Holmes as well, uh, which he wrote about with Willis Kinnear in an uh, underappreciated work, I find, called A New Design for Living. Even though there may be stored away in the subconscious many years of negative thinking along certain lines, this in no way need concern us. In fact, We do not even need to bother ourselves with what may or may not be there. What we need to do is to start today to make sure that the content of our conscious thought is good and think clearly and definitely about it. What occurs then is similar to drops of clear water falling into a glass of murky, inky water. Not much appears to have changed with the first drop, but slowly and surely the water in the glass becomes clearer and clearer until it is as clear as the drops that fall into it. You don't have to achieve enlightenment, awareness, or spirituality all at once, but drip by drip, drop by drop, taking those moments of expanded awareness to allow spirit into our lives. And when the pain comes up, When the bad memories, the trauma, the judgments, the uncertainties, the lack of confidence, the self beratement whatever it is, the trick is it's not there for you to relitigate. It's not there for you to re-experience. It's there for you to make the choice to say, that's not me anymore. That might be who I was, and even some of those negative thoughts may have served me for the time, but it's not who I am. Our only job is to let it go is to be aware of it, bless it, and let it go so that we can increase the room for good in our lives. My friends, we believe that we are surrounded by an infinite good all of the time. We believe that there is an ever-ending source of love, inspiration, and creativity around us all the time. Our work isn't in learning to hold on to this understanding, but is to continue to receive it drop by drop so that it continue to expand us in our living. And if we're not experiencing that infinite good, it's not the infinite good's fault. It's up to us to know, and you can say this with me, God is enough. 
Life is enough. I am enough. God is enough. Life is enough. I am enough. And I don't mean enough in some small kind of way. I mean that willingness to realize that having appreciation in the present moment is the very key to unlocking the ultimate reality and meaning of your life. And when we do it, it adds and expands.